It says, I'm Bronze League. I don't know my MMR. I'm unranked. Uh, I'm still learning the game. Uh, I'm only two weeks in. Based on the stats, this has been one of my best games, but I somehow lost. Where did I go wrong? Okay, cool. So this is going to be awesome. We're going to take a little look-see at our lovely uh, player, Silent Nomad. First of all, make sure those depots right up against the edge. That's not a wall off. So whenever you're placing your building, just try to find the edge to the point where you can't build the depot and then pull it back until you can build it. This is something we do all of the time. Even pros will do that, even if it delays your barracks a moment. Just make sure your buildings are on point. So far, we've got a barracks, gas, we've got SCVs building, we've got a command center control group, a barracks control group. These are all really good signs that we're getting set up on the fundamentals. It does look like we maybe put on gas a little bit slow there, but I mean, two weeks in, I'm not going to nitpick, man. Um, and we also missed a bit of SCV build time because we should be able to make an orbital at the same time as this marine, right? Orbital. There we go. Hey, we're making it. We've queued this guy down. Now, one of the big things we're missing is we didn't scout this game. And I don't care how early you guys are in your career. Always just make a habit. Grab an SCV. Send it to do a loop around their base. And then hide behind their expansion. If you do that with like your 17th, maybe right after you build your barracks gas. Maybe right before. Maybe you do it really early. It just means you're not going to die to as many proxy builds. It's going to give you a bit more information. You don't need to stare at it early on. All you're doing is going, are his buildings in his base? If they're not... You're getting proxied, so you're going to have some sort of response to deal with, like, the most aggressive all-ins, which is what a proxy is. And uh, the other one is you hide it behind the natural after, so if they don't have an expansion at 3 minutes 30, you have a set play, a set of safety precautions, because your opponent's doing a one-base play that is going to help you stay alive and figure out what's going on from there. Now, ignoring the fact that we're not scouting, we're playing completely blind, so who knows, that's an option. Uh, we have started the second depot, which is good. Normally, you do want to finish the wall. And we have queued that back, which is nice. We've queued this SCV back. We've queued it. Oh, the details are looking pretty good. Okay, so only two barracks, though. I would like to see three barracks. So building a second and a third barracks at the same time is really nice if we're doing a three racks build. That's going to make you way better off, right? Rather than just building a barracks, grab two SCVs, build two barracks at once. It's going to be a little bit quicker to go up the tech tree. But we're building Marines. We're building SCVs. This is all pretty good fundamentals. Let's take a look-see. We've already got Gary and Bruce going maybe a bit earlier than is required. Um, we got Command Center was maybe a bit late, eh? Let's check that Command Center. When did that Command Center start? All right. So we can see the Command Center should have started about a minute 40. Eh? Yeah, no, no, that's fine. It's just because... Yeah. So normally we don't need to build any depots for quite a while because that Command Center is finishing up, right? So I think we maybe looked at our supply and went, ooh, I'm almost supply blocked. But you've got to remember, you only really need to start building depots nonstop from about 35 supply, because this command center will always finish before you hit 31. Small little detail. <clears throat> Better to not get supply blocked than, uh, than, than anything else, though. Now, both barracks are on a control group, which is nice. We've got another reactor, though, which means no tech lab, which means no stim or shields for a long time. That's a really big problem. We're going to really need stim and shields or our marines aren't going to scale well into the later parts of the game. Now, we transferred workers. That's a really... That's a move you don't want to do. So, you want to just tr instead select your command centers and just put the rally point in the natural. It's going to be much easier to manage rather than pulling workers off here. And then later, once you build five more workers, this base will get too many workers. So, then you're going to need to trans change the rally point again. It's much easier and more organized... Because if you just... Oh, I've got 16 workers. Change the rally point. That's the, that's the Brood War main art of the workers. Which makes sense in Brood War. It doesn't make sense to do it in StarCraft 2. <laughs> because in, in StarCraft 1, it, you'd get more mining by having the guys spread more. But it doesn't make sense to do that in SC2. Once You just wait till you get 16 and then rally to the new base. Now, we've got two uh, command centers. We just dropped a mule, but we didn't queue SCVs. Now... You can see where we've got this second gas really early, but we don't really have a use for that second gas. And we're massing marines, but we don't have any tech progression. So we definitely do not need a second gas this early in the game. And we can see that we don't have a third barracks. We don't have tech labs or a factory. So we're, we're at this point, we're kind of doing all right on the basics. Like the SCV production is pretty good. We're dropping mules. And I like that we're dropping mules spread across these heavy patches. That's beautiful. But we should start dropping them on our natural, not our main. And that's going to allow us to keep our main base mining a bit longer, okay? 
always try to drop them on the, the heavy patches on your newest base. Unless we're doing open cut mining, which I doubt. You're not around, by the way, are you, Silent Nomad? I doubt Silent Nomad's here. Obviously, a lot of people submit replays. The stream goes for a long time, and they'll check out the VOD later. But uh, we are finally getting a third barracks and a factory down. Thanks, Velplayed. Glad you enjoyed the bronze to GM Terran. So Raven Harass comes in. We're just going to A move our Marines. Keep on macroing. Oh, Gary got killed. Bruce survived, but Gary got killed. Gary number two is going to come back in. But, uh, ooh. So, so the thing is, we're taking way too long to get to the next step now. Yeah. Way too long. And notice we're having to lift off buildings. So this building placement sucks ass. All right. This is where, guys, remember my, remember our class on building placement, okay? This is one of the most important things as Terran. This is a solid wall. That's really awkward to move around our base. And we just had to lift off a building to build an add-on. Remember, we want to batch these structures up. We don't want to be building structures one at a time like our barracks, if possible. But you always want to leave a two space gap. So you start with your barracks there. You have another depot there. Sure. Now, from this reactor, you want to leave two spaces and then start your next building. So you can go building, building, building. Three buildings in a row, all with their add-ons. Another two space gap. And then building, building. And you can do the same thing up here. You can go building, building. The reason we leave a two space gap is a tank takes up two tiles, two spaces. So you need to have a two space kind of road between your production structures. And you want to build them in, in neat little clumps with those roads between so your army can move around your base and you're not walling yourself off. Already, this is looking like a base which very well may end up walling some siege tanks in or something like that later on. Also, anytime you have to lift a building to then place an add-on, that's a lot of actions that you're doing for something that should be a lot easier, right? You should just be able to select your control group, build tech lab or something like that. Okay, so we kill the Raven, we kill the auto turret. Our economy is obviously looking pretty all right. We've got Stim on the way. We're starting to build some Marauders. We're going to swap the Starport over. We should immediately build the tech lab on this factory so we can start building tanks. No reason to wait. So when you tell it to land, you can just tell it to build the tech lab while it's flying. Just be like, hey, build the tech lab over there. It'll land, build the tech lab, all in one action. Now, the other thing is we still haven't scouted our opponent, and this is an absolute travesty. I already talked about how you need to send the SCV across at the start, but beyond that point, if you're going pure marine like this, this army is only going to perform well in big wide open spaces, especially in TVT where tanks and splash damage are massive. So at this point, if we're playing mostly bio, we should put a marine out here, a marine in the watchtower, basically spread some marines all around the map so we're not surprised by anything. And that's going to be absolutely massive. Thors are also two space units, yes. So our army actually smashes this army because we have 47 marines, two marauders to 14 marines, six marauders and a tank. All we need to do is A, move that in the open. If we had stim and shields, we would crush it. Unfortunately, remember what I said, if we go back to my bronze to GM, we would have had three barracks up much earlier. We would have had stim and shields, and we would have already been hitting an attack timing of our own much earlier than this. Now, we should just be able to A move this. We don't really need to do anything fancy. Unfortunately, you know, we did lose Metavax, but it is what it is. As long as we just A move our way down there, we got this. Oh, 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 okay. We do need to drop a scan. Widow Mine's a pretty good verse Marines there. So we could have pulled back, scanned, and, and then tried to focus the Widow Mines or avoid them. Marauders outrange Widow Mines with six range. Marines do not. So you'd need to focus fire them first to, to make sure you actually do it. Now, we've still got two full bases, which means we are done with the economy at this point, right? We've got plus one attack done, armor. As long as we just keep pumping marines and we, need, we really need shields, so we could have even queued up shields and concussive shells, we can kind of gather our units up and do it. One of the big problems we're having though, like I said, no map vision. Finally, we got an SCV across for scouting. And let's see what we do from here. So we're still building turrets. Uh, it's okay, but it's really not necessary. I mean, those two, I'm okay with these turrets, but I'll probably go get one there, one here is fine. If we want turrets, maybe one there, but I, I, I wouldn't be building these too often. I mean, we're building a third on location. We're doing a lot of things. We're making building armor, which is highly unnecessary. That's a super late game upgrade. Don't be, don't be bothering with that. <laughs> it's really not worth. Um, we are building more depots. I don't like that they're coming over here, which is kind of prime production space. Same with the engineering bay and the armory. I'd probably tuck those over there. And I try to keep the depots back in these areas just so that it doesn't fill up where our buildings want to go. I would also criticize before this fight happens the fact that we don't actually have our full two base production. So we've only got three barracks, one factory, one starport. To have full two base production, we need to have five barracks. So two more barracks 
And uh, once our third gets up, we can add extra factories and starports or extra barracks, depending on what we feel like doing. Okay, so we're finally going for an attack. Once again, we're walking across the map very blind, and also our shields isn't quite ready, so that is a bit of a bummer. But as long as we're attacking intelligently, we should be good. So let's watch what's happened. We've moved our army to the staging point, and now we're moving in with zero scouting. And this is not good, guys. You should be scanning ahead. If you don't want to scan, stim a marine and, and send it ahead there. Send a marine over here. We have no idea where our opponent's army is. The general rule of Terran is whenever you get over, you A move your army to a staging point, maybe three quarters of the way across the map, and then you start scanning ahead and checking what's going on and picking your fight. Right now, we haven't even grouped up our units. Half of them are still strung out in a column, and we're charging. This is not what we want to be doing. We don't even know what we're stepping into right now. And we're not stimming. Okay, we are going to siege the tanks and stim. Once again, though, we have no idea what we're stimming into. This is really bad. Tanks are going to go down. Bio getting overwhelmed there. I mean, this should have been a crushing fight with the numbers we had. If we had just stimmed and spread on that from the start. We still get a decent fight. But remember, guys, always scan ahead so you can actually see what you're attacking into and pick that fight. And the opponent is going to go for a sick counter doom drop here. So basically, the opponent's like, ah, oh, I'm dead. Maybe if I doom drop. And you've got turrets and you've got an army there, so you should be fine. We still haven't added extra production. We've got an extra eBay, which is good for upgrades. We've got a planetary on the third. Not bad at low level. Pretty bad when you get to higher level, but up through the middle leagues, you'll be fine with a planetary on the third. Um, I like that we're getting upgrades. I like that we're remembering to do things. We're transferring workers. We've also set the rally point. I mean, this is pretty good, guys. For someone who hasn't played ranked yet, get out there and play ranked. You're already playing silver players and having pretty good games here. Um, it, it feels like you could easily be beating gold players. Um, just, just with a, a few little refinements, for sure. Um, but we do need more barracks. Like I said, we, we only have one base production. Three barracks, a factory, and a starport is one base production. We're going to a fourth base. You gotta remember, add those two barracks. Or if you get this deep, just build five barracks. Go straight from three to eight barracks. Oh, I forgot to build the barracks. No worries. Build five barracks all in a row here. Cue the SCVs back to mining. So what do you do, guys? Box the SCVs, build barracks. Cue them back to mining. Control click the barracks. Add to control group. And then at some point in the fighting, you can select your barracks hotkey and just build tech labs and reactors and it'll be great. All right, so once again, moving in with no idea what we're moving into. Absolute disaster, guys. You've got to scan ahead. you got to scan ahead. And also, we should have sent a Marine here, a Marine here to see if our opponent had re-expanded. And when the fight happens, if we are going for a big overwhelming charge, stim is the first thing you do. Stim and A-move. Now, I like that we've A-moved, but notice we're sieging individual tanks rather than just stimming in. And yet we are. No ifs or buts. We are doing a barbarian charge, but we aren't stimming. And that is huge. And we're attacking to a sieged up position because we're not looking. And we start clicking on tanks, which is a big no-no 90% of the time. I don't think it was the worst thing there. I mean, the fact that we're still crushing through a little bit is a testament to how many units we had here compared to our opponent and the fact that our macro should win us this game but we just didn't get production obviously the engagements could be get better scanning ahead could be better but we just don't have production we're building a second factory five barracks that would have solved it these barracks terribly placed guys why are these barracks so badly placed because this one on the left can't build an add-on without being lifted off so what we're doing is we're creating more work for ourselves. We've got deeper in the game. We've got to the point where we don't have a game plan. And guess what? We're freaking the fuck out. Why? How do I know that? How can I read into the mind of Silent Nomad? Silent Nomad did not cue the SCVs back to minerals. The SCVs didn't go back to minerals. Up to this point, Silent Nomad's been really good about build building, cue back to minerals. Been really organized. But now Silent Nomad's like, oh, we're past the 12 minute mark. I've got a fourth. There's things going on. There's things going on. Stuff is happening. And he's kind of freaking himself out. Cause Silent Nomad's played so clean to now. It's like, dude, just build those five barracks, build a factory as well if you want, kill him back to mining. Still winning this game. But we're gonna see that bank start to build now um, because of that. So we're still gathering up. We're rallying across the map, which is generally a very dangerous idea. Cause what if his army goes around? 
and gets a good siege up. So never really, you should never really rally across the map. We've also accidentally got units picked up into a medevac here as well. Um, I don't know who's scanning. Okay, so he scanned the planetary on the third. This time we're actually scanning, but for some reason our medevacs are flying ahead. We've still got a loaded medevac there. Now we scanned ahead and we should, once again, we're attacking up the narrowest choke on the entire map. I mean, this is just a no-go. There's no reason why we should be pushing here. This is the exact same angle we just took a terrible fight on. This time we stim a little earlier and we do at least move through the choke point a little, but it's just the worst possible angle on the entire map. A lot of our units got trapped by our tanks trying to siege mid-fight. So this is just a really awkward fight for no good reason. Just in general, break the rocks and then and then go up if you're going to go up, but don't attack into siege. Oh, he sieges his tanks there? Cool. Go around, attack from here. You had enough medevacs to pick up your whole army, boost in the main. It doesn't matter, even if he has turrets. You can fly over turrets, unload eight medevacs. Even if you lose two full medevacs, you win the game there. Any of these would be absolute game-winning strats. But because we've just thrown away our second army in a row on a really bad fight, and we still don't have any extra production, his counterattack might be able to kill us now. Still going to be close, and if we actually just changed our rally points, we'd be good. But I think we can notice a big problem here. Our factory and starport never got put on any control group. Oh my god. The factory and starports never got put on a control group, even from the start of the game, which means Nomad has been manually clicking on these and building... Oh, Nomad! Fix it! Fix it! That is a disaster. Oh, that is so bad. Guys, that means literally Nomad's got to be like, mm, click here build things, click here, build things. That's so time consuming, man. People are like, oh man, I don't like RTS games because it feels like a chore. There's just so much to do. When you do stuff like that and don't control group, ooh, absolutely. That makes it so much harder to play than it needs to be, man. And these extra barracks and factories didn't get added either. So organize the production better. I mean, the fact that we kept up a constant stream of production was great. At this point, oh, just pull back. Whenever your opponent, you're not ready to fight your opponent, always pull back and just give up the base. Never fight, because the only way you lose StarCraft is taking a bad fight. Losing a base never kills. Grab the SCVs, run over here. You still got more economy. Pull your units way back here so they don't get aggroed into the fight. And just mass up units until you have enough Marines to jump over and, and wipe out what is a very small army. But we're doing the classic mistake here of just letting our army get baited in a few units at a time. And, uh, and that would be... And, yep, once again, pull back, just pull back. If you're not ready to fight, just run away. Run away! Guys, this goes back to my Welcome to StarCraft video, Common Mistakes vs. Rushes. And what do I say? I go through in detail, grab the units, pull them over here. Grab units, pull them... Just, just, just pull all the way back until you have more units. You'll absolutely overwhelm. But uh, as it is, the extra production would have already won us this game so long ago. Or just not headbutting up that ramp without really scouting in front of it two times in a row. GG, well played. Silent Nomad just appeared in chat. I only started playing two weeks ago. You're doing really, really well, Nomad. Just don't fall into those bad habits. Control group the factory and the starport every game. There's so many good habits you have. Add your production and you will destroy. There's so many good habits you already have for being two weeks into your journey. Get on the ladder easily gold league in the near future if not already um so get on it dude just get on it my friend you you are already well on the path to improvement just remember three barracks one factory one starport not enough the way you're playing a meaty bio army just build those extra five barracks all at once after your third base is totally fine if you remember to do it two barracks and then three more barracks that's fine but i reckon more often than not it's just easier and simpler to go oh we're on three base, build five more barracks. Now we have eight barracks. Heck yeah, let's do it. And that's going to do really well. Um, So guys, this is Senju versus Cascade. They're both in the clan. <clears throat> we both like to know what our biggest mistakes are. My specific question would be this. I am often afraid of taking third base. It takes so long to make a planetary. What's the best way to secure it while making it? I don't want to leave my natural open either. Replay is a bit long. Skip the second half, watch the stalemate unfold. So this is not a proper build at all, Senju. I guess that's the main thing here, <clears throat> is it's kind of like all over the shop. So you, you're wanting to take a planetary on your natural. That's the fear mindset. Okay, I think that's what, th th this replay is gonna be most useful for the fear mindset, right? So guys, Senju's asked about, how do I secure my natural? I'm afraid to take a third. I wanna get a planetary on my natural and my third, but it takes so long to erect. So I think basically, um, 
the real trick here is is you want to actually say to yourself, hey, wait a second. Don't play with the fear of a previous game in your mind. So if you're there and you're saying, look, man, they always bust in and kill my natural. Um, it's a symptom. Okay. Same, same thing. I can't defend my third base. Their army is always bigger than mine. That's the symptom. Now, the wrong solution to that is to say, well, how can I get a planetary fortress? Because what you're doing there is you're doing World War One strategy. You're saying, let's dig a bigger ditch and hide in it, right? That's what a planetary fortress is. If you ever build a planetary before your fourth base, you are hiding in a ditch. Now, don't get me wrong, you get to a pretty high level and planetaries can pay off a lot. But we can already see that paranoia here. We're massing turrets and we're also building Silver League turrets. Notice these turrets, what are they gonna defend? Guys, air comes in from here. So a turret there, great turret. Turret here, great turret. That turret there, great turret. These two turrets on the back, useless. This turret, not bad, but why not build it on the very edge so units can't fly past? Just go one turret there, one turret there, that's it. Why are we building four turrets around a base? It's because we're not focusing and improving on our basics, and instead we're relying on the static defense. So if you never improve at Terran, this is what most players fall into, is they just kind of go, I'm gonna kind of do the Florencio crutch, right? Which is, I'm just gonna make planetaries, tanks on the high ground, and I'm hoping my opponent will attack into me. So the first thing is, there's no, if you're going to play like this, you want to play like it. So what do I mean by play like it? Well, if you're going to do that, why are we making bio? Bio is for players who attack, bio is for players who micro, but why are we investing all of this gas? 100 minerals gas, 100 minerals gas, cloak, which we don't even have any ghosts for, no point building that, concussive 50-50, 100, 100, 100, 100, all these upgrades, and guess what? If we're building planetaries and whatnot, our bio is not even a useful army. So we'd be better off turtling with planetaries and just going straight up to BCs. If we're gonna play a style that's just camping, you do it. Go straight to the camping. And this is a common problem I see where people, look, now we're doing a bio attack, but he has infinitely more units than us, right? We could have been doing a two-pronged bio attack like this five minutes earlier if we'd committed to this properly. So what we see here is We've got two competing interests. One, I'm playing a big bio style where I want to multi-prong and have an economy, which means you should just be able to take a third, take a fourth on location, make orbital, all this sort of stuff, right? And you should have five barracks and we shouldn't be bothering with an armory yet. And we shouldn't be bothering with a ghost academy or any of this, right? And it should just be, and focus on using that bio well. Instead, we're trying to do kind of fancy nuke strats, which I'm okay with, but once again, combine your fancy nuke strats with battlecruiser harass with okay let's play mech because i can get five factories up i can have lots of tanks hellions thors units that are really easy for me to use they can defend really well tanks on the high ground fantastic but i can then also do new harass and if i want i can build a handful of cyclones run in kill a nexus run away you know but, but that's going to fit more this style playing bio here doesn't really make sense because number one we're not stimming our bio number two we're not really going to micro it at all are we and this nuke, unfortunately, very poorly placed because that nuke is only going to get part of the mineral line. So if you're going to do a nuke and there's no actual cannons there, make sure you do it right smack bang in the middle of the nexus is a pretty good choice. And that would be huge. So that's the main thing um, in terms of, I think this question was about Cascade as well, right? Our biggest mistakes are. Now, I think for Cascade, I don't think we've got any control groups on the army. Let's take a look. So Cascade definitely could have split the army up a bit. Does run the probes away though, so he's doing decently. That, like I said, could have done so much more damage, right? So much more damage. And definitely no reason for this bio to have hung around either. So Cascade has a pretty big army. Now, one of the big problems Cascade has is Cascade is breaking my golden rule. What's my golden rule, guys? What the fuck is that upgrade? Cascade! What have you done? Why do we have 16 Blink Stalkers? Are you parting? Are you parting, Cascade? Are you gonna micro these with fucking 450 APM best micro in the world? No, you're not. So don't make blink stalkers, make chargey boys. Chargey boys, you attack move them. The charge lot is the friend of the baboon. You are a baboon. This is not an insult. I am a baboon as well. I, there's a reason why I focus on zealots more than anything else. So don't build so many stalkers. You zealots are just much better performing units. And in general, um, getting aggressive earlier is going to basically help you guys work on your fundamentals if you really want to do that. Um, 
I don't mind a cannon in each base, right? That's, you know, having a random cannon. I would put it in the mineral line though, because this cannon, like they could literally walk in there and kill your stuff without the cannon doing much. So just remember, if you build a pylon right behind the mineral line, uh, you can actually put a cannon like there. It's totally fine. It's not gonna interrupt your mining that much. Just don't build it right next to the minerals because then it might block a patch off, okay? So Cascade moves in, kills a command center. And now guys, look, I called it Battlecruiser transition from Senju. This is the exact same thing I see in every single one of uh, the Silver League and, and low gold games that I look at from Terran. They always start making a handful of bio, they invest a crazy amount of money in bio, and then they're like, ah, oh, um, I guess I'll go battle cruisers now. Just go battle cruisers from the start. You will jump like four leagues. It's, you, you know, th there's just no reason to go bio. Why are we going bio? Because you're not really playing a bio game. And this is my point, guys. If you're playing bio, bio production on one base, three barracks. We never hit one base bio production. We've only got two barracks. So there's no reason to be playing bio. So what we see in the lower leagues is often a pay limitation of bio. It's a, I just am kind of building one of everything. And that's where having a clear decision about what you're going for is gonna be so much more effective. You know, okay, I'm just going straight for mech. We're all good, let's do it, you know. It's gonna be so, so much better. Now Cascade killed a base, but Cascade didn't continue on in to win the game. And Cascade, if you're not gonna be using a warp prism, I understand that's kind of harder to manage for a lot of people. You should much earlier in this game, because remember, Senju didn't really do anything to control the map for a long time. You send a pro, a few probes out, and you just go build pylons everywhere. Pylon, pylon, all along the edges of the map, and then you can always warp in off those pylons to reinforce your army, to send runbys in, and also to spot incoming drops and that sort of stuff. So that can be really, really huge. That makes a massive, massive difference. Um, so the Stalkers are going to go down to the right side now. We're going to go wander around this map. Of course, we, we haven't really set any observers up for map vision as well, other than we've got one there and one with our army. So we should there's no we should have had an observer over on his side of the map a lot earlier. Um, we're adding disruptors, which is cute, but we don't really need it right now. And we definitely should just go kill him. And we should have done it a while ago. Really? There's, there's one tank on the high ground. This is not going to defend you. You can just walk up and kill that tank super easy. So this should be a game win. Zealots will warp in to defend. Ghost is still going to be nuking us. Now, once your opponent starts nuking you, just remember, if you can get a pile on a cannon out here, it's going to help zone out nukes. If you get a cannon out here, you've already got, which is great. So just that sort of thing, get a cannon out here if you can, or leave an observer out front, your natural. It's a nice way to help deal with it. But once again, it's a misplaced nuke. Senju could have got that in the middle of the mineral line. He only gets a few probes. And looks like Cascade should be able to win this game. Just needs to actually move in, but Cascade's not microing this. So this is an A-move attack. You need to move the Colossus and the Observer forward so you can see the tank. So we're letting this tank do a crazy amount of damage. Finally, we clean it up. We've also move commanded our Colossus into the turrets there. Finally, we're going to push on in, but we keep clicking on buildings. Okay, so we've noticed that with the micro Cascade, you keep clicking on buildings. Never target fire things. Never click on actual buildings. This is something that a lot of low-level players do all the time. They're running in and they're clicking building, click a building, click a building. Just don't do it. Move in and then A move on the ground. Move in, click a tank, and then just let them kill whatever's nearby them. But when you're clicking on buildings, clicking on commands and it's like that, it's almost always a very bad idea. So try to break that habit completely if you can. Now behind this, we've had so much money for so long, and our opponent obviously has a few battle cruisers. So the thing is we could have been warping in stalkers this whole time. Whenever you get in a base trade like this, keep warping in. In this scenario, you identify its battle cruisers, you just keep warping in stalkers and you do it that way. Um, but yeah, essentially either of you could have attacked the other one much earlier and uh, probably ended them with any sort of solid two base timing attack. Either of you probably would have died to that. So I think that's the really big thing is get active earlier and you should do well and um, we can kind of see it in your banks that neither of you really had any attack timing plan. You were kind of trying to just build things as you go. But what I really like to encourage people to do is to build things, but then transition behind it. We've had so many gateways up for so long. Oh my God, finally we did warp in some stalkers apparently. Okay, so we've got some stalkers out. And that BC. What is it, three BCs? No fair, you, you've still got gateways. Keep warping in stalkers, bro. You've had the gateways bound for so long. Oh my God. <laughs> the cyber core is still up and the gateways have been powered for so long, but Cascade has just not been warping. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> that's fucking, <laughs> why do we only have seven stalkers? We could have had like 45. <laughs> okay, I guess we are supply blocked now. But don't we have probes? 
Oh my god, did we lose every single probe? Oh my god, we lost them all earlier, hey. We only had probes where on the natural. Oh. Yeah, I mean, at this point, we weren't supply blocked. We, we had a lot of time pre-supply block. This is so dumb. Uh, uh, Alright. But yeah, is there anything wrong with the build orders? I mean, I think if you just look at bronze to GM, we can kind of see that both of these build orders are completely wrong. Because there's just no clear timing attacks or plan that it leads to. And this is a general rule you can apply to StarCraft, is if you don't have a clear timing attack you're leading towards, and you're kind of just doing a lot of different things at once, you, you are going to generally struggle. So, for Senju, um, don't be so planetary focused, you know, get on get on there with that stuff. I mean, this is obviously game over. The Stalkers can't beat the BCs unless the BCs shit the bed a little. Actually, no, he's on red. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the Stalkers could win this, actually. Because Yamato never got made. Oh, man. Oh, cool. Okay, Cascade. Cascade wins. Do you have more bases I don't know about? I love this. This is like... <laughs> this is the most gold league thing ever. It's like, I could A move units around the edges to check, but I'm going to type in chat to ask you instead of scouting. <laughs> you got an observer sitting here. Go. What I really like about Cascade, guys, is Cascade actually never F2. So Cascade has much better fundamentals than Senju, I think, in that regard. Um, because this observer was never on pervert mode and it never moved from this spot, not even once. I mean, one stalker beats this BC. It's it's game over. Yeah. GG's. Oh my god, he let it tie? Oh no, you should have killed your own assimilator. Okay, so guys, when the draw timer comes up, you just kill your own building and it'll reset the draw timer, okay? So you just kill a building that doesn't matter. And um, yeah. So the thing is, as Cascade, you actually should have had vision just before the end of this game anyway of the starport. Now, vision of that starport, you'll notice, hey, I don't have a unit here, but I can see the starport. That tells you they don't have a command center, okay? So if they don't have a command center, after about a minute, they get revealed. This is a mechanic in StarCraft a lot of new players don't know about. So basically, if someone's starport, if you can see their buildings on the map without actually having units there, that means that they have, have actually not got a command center, okay? So he actually has two SCVs and he could have made commands in his chat spawning. Oh my God, you guys, you guys are right. He could have built like four command centers already. Senju sh should build a command center here, then Q1 here, then here. And he could actually unsupply block himself with the very first command center and start rebuilding. He should just start hiding command centers everywhere. Um, meanwhile, Cascade has 23 supply, right? Cause it's a pylon and a nexus. So if you think about it guys, the six stalkers only chew up 12 supply. If he just kills off all of his own zealots and disruptors, keeps the stalkers he can still build 10 uh you know 11 extra probes on top of that and start rebuilding his economy the moment he has an extra probe out he can drop an extra two next eye take this base take this base um but neither player rebuilt um and uh yeah they both were just doing their things <laughs> in terms of the opening it feels to me like cascade had something more approaching a standard opening it was a nexus into a second gate four gas not many gateway units, but did have a shield battery at least. And just very little map vision after the early game. Definitely this observer could have been out a little faster. So you can see that Cascade was playing more of a quote-unquote normal style. I think what I'd really criticize from Cascade, guys, is that Cascade was going Stalker Sentry, but never hit a timing attack. And if there's ever an army, which I encourage people to use, it is Stalker Sentry, but you want to get up to about five sentries, and you want to go and do timing attacks with it. Otherwise, why are we making Stalker Sentry and then just making zealots. If we went and hit a timing attack, it's gonna be way more effective. Now, of course, he does have that tank on the high ground, but you could move in and fight from over here using hold position. You could bust the bunker and inch forward without actually engaging in tank range. And obviously, if your opponent doesn't have a tank on the high ground, you'll have some good opportunities. So definitely something where, once again, same as on the north side, we're both going up to the 50s, the 60s plus in workers without engaging with the opponent at all. The longer you get the game go without interacting with the opponent, the more the game's going to get out of control. There's going to be all these different variables, and it's going to be hard for you to improve your game sense, improve your understanding, and actually develop your basics. Because so much happens in the game that at the end of that game, there's no way you have any idea what you can learn from that game, right? There's just no way. But um, if you if you don't attack the opponent, it's really hard to like remember where did I fall ahead, behind, where did I get ahead. Um, so you got to get out there and actually attack each other.
Um, how do I win TBT tank war? I feel like my opening gets me through the early stage as well. However, I have a hard time converting wins versus mass tanks. Oh, okay, cool. Tank, qu classic tank war theory. We this comes up every single IC far, um, uh, or not every IC far, every newbie stream. Um, oh, this is game, right? Oh, unseat your tanks, bro. Stauf. If you unseat your tanks, you win this game, mate. Okay, at this point, unseage the tanks. You know what he's going to do. Select, select them, unseage them. I, he got the most splash damage I've ever seen of friendly fire there. Like, somehow, he got the, the luckiest friendly fire splash damage hits there. That was insane. Your tanks should have all survived there. If they just unseage, they kill those Vikings pretty quick, man. Um, and you ran your marines away. They could have killed this SCVs, but in the command center. Ah, oh, well, it is what it is. Anyways, um, yeah, you were kind of just staring at the front and you were trying to like headbutt through the front with tanks. That's that's really not something you usually want to do, headbutting through the front with, with bio tank. Um, you're trying to play like a heavy marine style. So you, you probably should have been on Metavax and you should be like, I'll just send a drop here, double drop around the top, and then you can attack the front when they go to respond to that, right? Because then you can stim on their, their tanks and stuff. I mean, you're still finding good angles. You're scanning ahead. So you're doing some good moves, which is cool. But uh, yeah, you just need to get in a bit deeper. Kitty, 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 kitty. So if you were a young Japanese girl who has tied up this Castile master of yours and you were about to shove acupuncture needles into his abdomen and then jump on top of him. Um, yes, yes, I've watched some messed up Japanese horror movies in my time. Then uh, you'd be shouting kiri 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 tipa 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 um right now um yeah uh your marines if you just start a stepped onto that bio you kill it so quickly start a step all your marines are stuck behind each other you're still taking a good trade oh and now you're you're stuttering away but you're in tank range so you could have microed this a lot better why didn't we do another scan there dude so why are we not scanning right now, is, is my question. You've got plenty of scans, right? Yeah, you've got scans available. So you should have been scanning. And then at this point, you could have said, oh, cool, his tanks are miles away. I've got the high ground. I can just spread out up here a little bit and just fight these Marines as they run up into the choke point, right? It's called The Audition. It's a real movie, guys. It's fucked up. I mean, you still did okay, but you didn't finish the command center. We could have killed all of his production or his whole army. Like, we should have won the game there. So the thing is, you're doing runaround tactics. Um, I don't know why you're focusing on Vikings if you're doing the runaround tactics. It's actually surprising because you have maintained the air advantage, which is good. But at this point, you want to put Marines out to make sure he's not taking bases. And to be fair, if I was you, I'd hit the exact same attack angle. Because if it's worked four times in a row and your opponent still has no map vision, no spotters out there and is not covering it, yeah, why not just go for the same attack angle again 40,000th time? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, drops would have absolutely slayed this game. But uh, yeah, this is just not how you win a tank. I mean, the thing is, you've asked about a tank war, I guess, um, Stauf, and, and this is not really a tank war. This is your... I mean, I guess, okay, I guess it's going to become a tank war soon, maybe. This is your, you were kind of doing a two base bio all in versus like with some tanks, sure, against a guy who's a little more turtly. I mean, good kill there. But in general, if you're playing mass marine, you're trying to catch him out of position. His army's here, your 30 marines run in the top and kill a base. Your marines drop in the back, do damage. He stems back to deal with it. Your army rotates in. Oh, guess what? We've got siege position in range of the planetary. Na 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 na, that sort of thing, right? So, that the, the whole goal in TVT is never to push through their tanks. The only time you push through your opponent's tanks is if you massively outnumber them and with marine heavy, if you can stim in from multiple angles. The other way you do it is normally you go forward, you siege, and then he's like, oh fuck, oh fuck, he's pushing in, and you split. And, and maybe you leave a tank or two, but generally you just unsiege, move to a new angle. And if you really don't want to micro drops because that is hard, you get a few liberators. Imagine these Vikings aren't really doing anything, but imagine if we had a few liberators. We could have two libs here. We go, you go in or on the top side, you know, libs come in to this point. We've queued them along the edge of the map and then we siege this base and this base. And and our army is rotating at the same time. You're just trying to catch your, you're just trying to get the forward siege position so they fight into you. So our army, oh my God, what are we doing? Why were we even there? Oof. Okay, so just unsiege, move to a new angle. And what we do here is you show yourself moving to the right 
Now he, and, and you scan here, he's gonna unsiege and frantically run over here to defend. This is assuming high level play, right? And then as soon as this scan runs out, you immediately go back in this direction, scan his army again, and then you just walk back in the same angle. Now let's see if that would have worked here. As I suspected, your opponent has zero map awareness. So no, with this opponent, you don't even need the mind game. You literally could have just walked over and just sieged up already. <laughs> so I, I just talked about the high level mind game of like he sees you going that way so he's gonna move to respond so you actually go back as soon as his scan runs out <laughs> it's like no 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 this is not that level of play you guys are, are, are doing pretty good movement but you don't need to be that fancy so we just gave him a solid minute and a half we we stopped to break the rocks no need to do that and we still haven't cut off his bases on the top side i like that you're being aggressive and moving a lot but we just moved in without scanning we broke a huge rule we also walked into tank fire there. We broke a huge rule. We were winning the game up to then. And then we've just done two derpy engagements in a row in a game which you should have felt really calm because you were winning. You were methodically just working your way ahead, getting damage done. The only problem is that you are very much one ball focused. Whereas like I said, if we have 20 Marines right now, stim into the natural, into the production, you kill all of his production. His army goes to respond. Tanks move forward, siege on this base if he unseages his tanks, right? Otherwise, Oh, we're letting him take the whole corner for no reason. This is why marine spotters are really important. One of the most common things you do in TVT. Two marines here. Oh, it was even just single marines. But if he starts sending marines out to counter them, then you send two marines. He sends two marines out, you send a drop of eight marines to just run around cleaning things up. And you should you should not never have let him take these bases. His economy is on his last legs, and yet you're just letting it go up for free, even though it has no defense, which is, of course, a huge problem. Now, once again, he's left the exact same attack angle open again. Remember, if, if you've done the same attack angle three times in a row, guys, and your opponent's been completely unprepared, it's really dumb to go in again unless you're relying on your opponent being a baboon. Now, we scanned, so we confirmed he was a baboon before going in, and our opponent did leave it wide open. Unfortunately, we were rallying across the map. Now, in this scenario... I would have probably already changed my rally point back to the high ground because I'd expect him to base trade. But as it is, this should still be GG. Scan, why are we not scanning behind our army? This is what I was talking about before. Don't just scan in front, scan, figure out where he is. There we go. And get your Marines back. Your tanks are forward, you're all good. No need for our Marines to be standing out there. Our Marines should be behind our siege tanks usually, right? He's, he's actually in range of us, isn't he? Is he not in range? Ooh, okay. And we still haven't killed, oh my god. Map awareness, bro. Okay, so what's happening here, Stalf, is you feel forced to do something. You've literally won the game. Leave the tanks, split your marines to kill all these depots and infrastructure. Everything else can just stay here and just keep building at home. All right, let's build three more orbitals, take another command center down here, which I'll turn into a planetary, gather up my marines and tanks, send some marine spotters out to track what's going on on the map, scan his army every now and then. So if he does go for... If he leaves this position, we can keep moving around. We can always pick up three medevacs and marines and just go drop down and just, you know, either send it home or or whatever. But the thing is, once you get your tanks in a position, it's his job to deal with it. It's not your job to do anything with it. So the fact that you're unseaging, you're running units into him, makes me feel like you're a little bit like, oh, i got to do things. But like, there's just, there's money left on the table here. And this should be a zero APM scenario. Move one or two tanks forward is all you needed to do there. Hold position the marines and just chill. And just build up at home, grab another army, go clean up what's left on the map. Right now, it's your map awareness that sucks. Marine spotters should be going out there all over the map. And we should be having a really easy time. See, we're wasting our mental time trying to get this army out of here. There's just no reason. There's just no reason. Can I skip Vikings from the get-go with this style? Yeah, I mean, it just means if a fight happens, obviously, you've got to be really careful with, like... Anytime you're in a standoff, obviously you're going to need to use scans because he has air advantage. So if you go Vikings, you do get the tank siege ability, right? Because your Vikings, if you control the skies, can, can give you vision. If you go Medivacs, you have more drops. So it depends on how you want to play stuff. If you commit to the Vikings, make sure you're actually doing those forwards, get in range of a planetary, siege up, he has to come to you, right? If you're playing Medivacs, you're doing more drops and doom drops and that sort of stuff. So just think of those as two different styles. The Medivacs allow you to do more drops and runbys and things with your Marines, get more mobile. The Vikings is going to make mean you're, you're simply naturally more tank focused and play is better into a big three, four base onwards, two factory, three factory, two starports, lots of Vikings and tanks. It's almost like a semi-mech style where the Marines are more just support, right? But the medevacs mean your Marines have more longevity and you're going to be able to use those medevacs to fly around the back and get drops in a lot more. 
So if, if you want to use the Vikings, absolutely go for it. It just means you want to make sure you use those tanks a little bit more standard. So once again, like just the APM that we're wasting on the front there for no reason. It's like we keep staring at this. It's like, dude, you've checkmated him with this drop, dude. You checkmated him. Just leave it sieged up. Grab this army. Go clean up the rest of his bases. This is so game over. But you're just not scouting the map. And you're just walking down the ramp for some reason. We're trying to... I don't know what we're doing here with our army. Why are we trying to clean up this army? There's nothing left. And we, we finally scout the top right. But my god. So... You, 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 oh my god. Why are we attacking down here? Why? Oh no. Oh no. And we're out of gas behind this as well. Oh no. <laughs> He's protecting two refineries. Why did we attack down there? Okay. The same thing in Lurker vs. Lurker. Never, ever... There's no re You never try to break tanks. You always just go around. You set up your tanks. It's his job to deal with it. Grab your other army. Go kill other stuff. Um, if you want to abandon it, you could have, like I said, just picked up the marines, dropped them on the low ground, and just gone off with them. Just leave the tanks there. Just count them as lost units. Doesn't matter. But you also never killed all of his depots and stuff. This is so valuable. He's going to be so supply blocked if you killed all that. So real unfortunate there. But the thing is, just feel comfortable. Remember that you are winning the game. Okay, guys, so to summarize, how do I win a tank war in TVT? The trick is tanks are a defensive unit. So what you do is you build your, you get your defense sieged up on their base and they have to attack into you. You are never trying to break a tank line. As a general rule, there are times you can break tank lines. There are ways to do it. If there's just one tank, say, say you're more moving forward here with your whole army, there's two tanks here. You could just move your eight siege tanks in range, siege them up, you'll lose one or two tanks, and then you one-shot their tanks, and then you're in range of their base, you've created an amazing position, right? There are times like that, but if they've got eight tanks, you have eight tanks. What do we do? We go around. We go siege up over here. When he's moving a deal with it, and then we go siege another, but you just, you move around, and you find the weak spots, and you scan, and you monitor their army movement, and eventually you find a spot where, oh, he's only got one siege tank here? Cool, we can just move in, siege up on range of the command center. It's his job to, to deal with our push. And if those units ever get isolated or trapped, you just keep a spread of Marines and tanks, grab a new army, send them down the other side of the map. You got it. And that's it. It's always about getting a forward position and saying, deal with this, deal with this, and then moving on from there. So don't ever feel like, I've got to push through, I've got to push through, I've got to push through. TBT is about creating pressure, getting a forward position on the map to make your opponent uncomfortable. So he takes the dumb fights. And then you go around the edges and you do harassment. You send libs in and drops in. And if you do ever want to break the front, the way you do that is you get Viking advantage. So you get a second starport, you get a Viking advantage, and then you mix just a couple liberators in. So when your tanks are sieged just outrange of their tanks, you can then get your Vikings in front to spot and then you siege liberators on his tanks. And that's a way you can... And if he tries to stim forward... Your tanks will kill all his marines. If he runs forward with Vikings, you have the Viking advantage. That's the way you push through the front. So if you want to, you can really focus. You're like, I'm on four base. Whenever I'm on four base, I get a second starport, three factories. And yes, I have some marines, but mostly it's just lots of tanks, lots of Vikings. And I just and just work on that maneuver. Siege just outside of tank range. Move your Vikings forward, siege your libs on him, and just leapfrog. It's just like this leapfrog. And if people aren't really quick at unseaging their tanks, you'll be surprised how quickly you just crush them. It's a very powerful, powerful way of pushing. That's one of the best skills you can work to become a, a much better TVT player if you're really a front-on guy. Like I said, if you're more of a multi-prong guy, get those drops moving, move around, siege up a base, keep doing what you were doing, stimming into the production and stuff. Overall, the fact that you were very active and movement focused, I'm really proud of, dude. So really well done by Stealth for moving around, constantly scanning ahead of the army and finding that way in the natural. Even just queuing a few drops in. And remember, it doesn't take a lot of APM. You can literally just queue those drops along the edge into the mineral lines. And if it dies, it dies. It's eight Marines in a medevac. You lost 400... 50 marines that game if you lose eight marines in a drop that flies into some turrets it, it really doesn't matter but the power of that getting in a, a mineral line and your opponent going ah, ah, and freaking out is huge so definitely don't underestimate that this is a legit tryout game for me i'm progressing painfully slowly what is holding me back the most that i need to work on i guess this is from noisy boy 2832 so um, don't focus on the the end result would be the first thing. If it's painful to progress, that if someone speaks like that, it's always for me as a very experienced coach over many years, 
of me saying, hey, you're focusing too much on the end results because it wouldn't be painful if you were just focused on what you need to focus on. Now, there's a few different sayings that people have in different sports and, and areas where they say, trust the process, trust in the process. Um, you know, just keep hitting your program. Um, just follow the basics. Keep working on the basics and progress will come. It, it, there's so many different fields. It's all speaking about the same thing which is enjoy the basic process of just playing the game and focusing on the details to get better, right? And if you do that, the gains, the MMR growth will come. You just check in on the MMR once in a while, but if you're obsessing over the MMR, it's really unhealthy because then every loss is like, damn it, no, I'm further from my goals. And you should actually be really happy with a lot of your losses if you are improving at things you're doing some things well starcraft's a game one or two mistakes can cause a victory to be a defeat but if you still did really well on the things that you're trying to improve on you should still be thinking of that as a victory in your own head and this is people are like that's mental gymnastics it's bullshit all that matters is winning no it's it's super real and it's super super serious now, one thing we noticed to start those scvs could have been queued both at once build barracks build barracks queue them back why bother doing it as two actions? It's just unnecessary, okay? So you 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 just doubled up on it to what? Get this the first barracks My man. three seconds earlier. And you know what the problem is there? The problem is that if you then get tempted to go one tech lab and then the other tech lab later, you're just doubling up on the actions again. So just be careful. I'm not sure if you just didn't quite have the money and you were trying to do it at once, but just be careful on that one, okay, noisy boy. Got a second gas on the way. Um Okay, yeah, this looks like a pretty solid build order. Command center is really late, though. So what happened with your command center this game, buddy? Looks like something went down. Should be started on about a minute 40. So, for some reason, we're chatting to our opponent. Oh, okay. So basically, you're tilted from your previous games, and you're just not paying attention to your build order. Okay, that's, that's literally this whole game. So check it out. This SCV should be rallied to the natural already, but you haven't rallied him down to mine minerals and then build the command center, right? And we're missing SCV production for quite a few seconds because that should be ready to go orbital marine or orbital reactor. So you've messed up your own build by typing with the opponent. We're now building a 20th SCV when that should be an orbital. The reactor's a few seconds late. Build the command center. Command center! But we built an extra SCV, then the orbital. Come on! You're literally beating yourself through chatter. Your command center is like 30 seconds late. So now, now, that's going to supply block you as well because of that. So this is just like, I get it. Chatting can be nice sometimes. But, I mean, games like this, those things make a big effect, man. Messing up your build early on. I mean, we, we all know about the, the early improvements and getting a good start it scales because of the way the economy scales in starcraft so you gotta be really careful with like games like this you're like man protoss is just ember or like whatever oh man i'm improving so slowly but we can even see it's you being obsessed with the fact that you lost your last three games which distracted you into complaining in the start man i don't even think the tears are working this season like i'm not improving but that's stopping you from improving in this game right so this is like actually the cycle that you get into like i said if you obsess too much over improving and instead just enjoy the process of playing the game hitting your build order and just look for that beautiful feeling of oh yeah hit the 31 supply block bam depot finished like all this sort of stuff like bam this happened right as this started like hit your build real tight and you'd be amazed how much better you're gonna do as a player just focus on those goals and uh, you'll improve really well now, a couple of SCVs could go on the second gas in the main. We're, we're, we're a bit slow to transfer onto that second gas. And we've got just extra workers on the minerals, right? So no reason not to. Um, otherwise, though, build's doing all right. We have been a bit blind for a while, but we saw a Nexus, so that's okay. Factory's on the way. Still haven't put on that second gas. Uh-oh. Now we're going to do it. Okay, so we realized that. All right, all right, all right. One of the best things you guys can do when you're having a bad couple of games, guys, take a break, go do some push-ups, walk around the house, take a five, 10 minute break. And then what you do is you come back, watch your replays and don't think about the strategy. Don't think about your opponent's bullshit, Colossus or Baneling bust. Just focus on your build and look at it and go, hey, did I do my build correctly before the interaction happened? You know, 
Let's look at my opening. Did my first depot go down right on 20 seconds or whatever the, the timing is? Did I get it right on 100 minerals? Did I immediately go for the reactor, the orbital, and then the command center? That's the things where you want to really feel good when you sync those things up. That's what's going to make you a great RTS player. Um, syncing that stuff, getting those synergies. It, it, in, a, in a less real-time basis, it's kind of what a lot of strategy games are, right? Civilization, it's when you start syncing up a few different effects and combos in like a 4x game and you get them all together and you're like mm, and you bring it together and it's just so nice should the depot be a bunker uh he saw an expansion from the opponent and he's playing three racks so he doesn't need a bunker no um he definitely could wall off with depots if we wanted to though and notice that we don't have any depot builders so speaking of bad habits we're relying on ourselves to mentally remember to build depots that's that's not reliable the moment there's any distractions, we're going to forget to do that. So this is why we have Gary and Bruce. For those who don't know, for those of you who haven't watched my Bronze to GM series, definitely check it out. Exclamation mark Bronze to GM or exclamation mark T B, B to GM, exclamation mark Z B to GM, depending on the race, Zerg, Terran, Protoss, right? But what do we have? In that, from 35 supply onwards, before you hit your 40, uh, 44, 46 supply block, whatever the hell it is, 46 for Terran, right? 42, 46? Jesus, my brain. I think it's 46. Um... About 35 supply, you get Gary and Bruce, two SCVs, and their job for the rest of the game, until you're at 200 supply of depots at least, is to build depots. And you just build depots, and unlike other buildings where you build a building, queue back to minerals, you never queue them back. So even if you forget to build depots, you will get reminded by the idle worker button and the fact that they're just sitting there to do it. So you do not want to build depot queue back. See what he's doing, noisy boy? And then every now and then, every cycle, you build drop mules, build SCVs, and you tell them to queue up another depot. And you just do it like clockwork, and it's okay to have more supply free. It's better to overbuild depots ahead of time than it is to get supply blocked like Noisy Boy's having happen here. Now, Noisy Boy's going to move out with the Stim Shields, Concussive Timing, and the first Medivac, which is exactly the plan. It's going to drop a third behind it, drop an Engineering Bay. I, I would love to see two more barracks since we're, we're floating, you know, we're, we've got a bit of money here. Um, we definitely could be way higher on the SCVs as well, I think, if we hit that as command center and not being supply blocked at all. Now, obviously, we don't really know what we're going into. So, and you know, let's let it's it's a big attack though, but we definitely need to be scanning ahead because this is what we do with every attack with Terran, right? But our, our player here has made a mistake. They've been dropping mules even as they move across the map. Remember, the moment you move out, you stop dropping mules. And you want to have urgency. Get in there. Get in there. Go kill some shit. And if you scan. Oh, look at this, guys. So Noisy Boy is getting fancy. Noisy Boy has no information about what he's up against, and he's already getting fancy and thinking, I'm going to drop the main and stim in the front. Not the worst game plan, but he could easily have just moved his army down here, killed this base, and then pulled back. He cannot attack up a ramp into Colossus. That's not going to work very well for him. But if the Colossus chase him out into a big open area, he definitely could potentially kill it. Now, this could work as well, but let's see how he does it. Because these guys need to be... Oh, he's going to stim a move the natural and unload in the main. Has he queued them to unload? Yes, he has. Now, he needs to very quickly pull these back. And you know what would have made this easier? If he scanned, he never would have stimmed with this army. He would have said, okay, army's in position on the natural. These guys can just stand here. Unload these guys. Stim them. A move them in. And then jump back down. Stim. A move in the natural. And then go up and micro the guys in the main. That would be a good attack. But as it is... We're going to run into Battery Colossus here. We actually killed a Colossus, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to give Noisy Boy some big dick points for that one. Um, and these guys are going to run in. These guys ran away. Surprisingly, they chased him all the way back. But that's a classic, okay, in disengage, where you clicked back two full screens. So I'm really impressed with that maneuver. Now we're going to run... Oh, get out. Oh, oh, we could have killed that. If we actually just clicked the Colossus, we win the game right there. So we just ran away from a winning fight. Now, the reason I'm going to criticize that is because... The moment you see the recall animation, you want to make that decision sooner. So in this scenario, I would like you to be like, all right, I'm killing it. Oh, yeah, this is good. I would immediately pick in the medevax and leave, or I would hold and try to fight. But you have to make that decision now. But pig, how do I make that decision? Guys, I'm going to be honest. I just roll a fucking dice if I'm torn. All right. I, Based off your game sense, maybe you have a feeling for how big the army is. It's, it's feeling. It's feeling. It's what did you see with the rest of your army? How, how many units do you think are recalling? Do not wait until they recall to make that decision, though, because you're going to panic and you're going to shit the bed, which is kind of what Noisy Boy does here. When Noisy Boy stays, and you know what? If Noisy Boy did stay, it would have worked, because there's only five stalkers. They're not going to do anything. You kill that Colossus if you keep clicking it. You got it, you know? 
Now at this point, you've done so much damage, but you've been microing for so long. Remember what I talked about earlier today, where the longer you're microing, the more your macro is ignored, right? So we're watching from Noisy Boy's camera. So Noisy Boy should just be disengaging, fly those drops home and go macro or, or leave the drops out here to heal up. Why? Because your macro has been ignored. Now what Noisy Boy just did is Noisy Boy paid lip service to macro. Noisy Boy selected the barracks, queued up a few Marauders and Marines and then went back to microing. We have not been building our CVs. We have not been dropping mules. We have not morphed an orbital. We have not built our fourth and fifth barracks. There's a lot of things that are missing right now. That proper macro is being ignored. If we were, imagine if we're taking a third and building SCVs for it, we could be heading to 55, 60 SCVs in the next minute or two against a Protoss that's already hamstrung. But what are we doing? We are actually damaging ourselves with this drop. And this is a concept that I want you guys to really think about. Anytime you have urgent things to be done back at your base and you stare at your micro, you better be getting really good value damage out of it because every second you're looking here, you're not doing things at home. So you're actually taking damage. This is like, if you think about it in some games, you might like step into the lava or into the poison swamp and you start having your hit points go down. The first 20 to 30 seconds of micro, hey, when he first went in, he'd just done all his macro at home. He'd queued extra SCVs. That was okay. But now he's already been microing for like almost like 30, 45, 40 seconds maybe. And to now he's missing so much production, right? So you've got to think about it in terms of going, hey, just, just pull that back. We did some damage, disengage. Because a lot of people go, I gotta keep doing damage. I gotta keep doing damage. Otherwise he's gonna get carriers, man. But realistically, the reason you feel that is because you're not macroing properly behind it. So you're thinking I need to do more damage. But if you think about it, if you just spend your money at home and build to your next big attack, you're gonna win the game much more reliably that way. Whereas this is going to be a bit of a toss up. Are we actually going to do damage here? And the answer is no. Thankfully we turn around there. We do fly away. Please just tell me we click that away. But now we're grabbing our army. We're already preparing for the next attack. I mean, this is going to do some damage. I don't like that we boosted there. I would have liked to save that for the way out. It's doing damage, but now we're trying to micro on the front and take a third. Once again, lip service to Macro. So what I mean by lip service, he went home, lifted the third, told it to land. No, and don't get me wrong, guys, we see Maru do this, we see Clem, we see Big Gabe, we see all our Terran heroes do this and all of our pros. So we kind of get under this idea that that's what good Starcraft looks like. And it is what good Starcraft looks like. When this number in the top left, left, you see that? When that says 400, it's a really good idea because you can micro that drop and float a third. And what did we miss? Build the fourth and fifth barracks that's literally we could have built three minutes ago. And get plus one armor queued. And build medevacs and tanks, not just marines and marauders. And build SCVs. And rally the SCVs to the third mineral line. And take a fourth gas, guys. There's a lot of things to do. There's a lot of tasks to do. Just going and lifting a third makes us feel like we're macroing. We're not actually macroing. Noisy Boy has some great multi-prong. I love the tactics. But... Just take a breather once every, like once you've done the damage, take a breather, do some macro, and then go in for round two. And I guarantee you it's still gonna work. If you if you just waited for these guys, come over here or, or over here, and then they attack the natural as you drop the third with these guys that were just waiting down here in the dead space, it's gonna work. It's still gonna work. That 30 seconds is not gonna make your opponent be magically well prepared. Now I love that you're 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 doing these cute little drops obviously that was a bit of a, a f2 maybe mistake or something like that but yeah i mean you're doing pretty good now let's see what's our progression okay so we're still not rallying to the third which is definitely a problem we're only building one barracks remember two barracks at once i think we meant to but maybe we didn't have the money maybe we misclicked or something you can see two SCVs. So really need the fourth and the fifth barracks we haven't been building any tanks so that might be a bit of a bad habit that we have orbital hasn't made Still not, we should be at this stage of the game. Oh, because we're, we're dropping. What the fuck are we doing dropping right now? Stop, you haven't fixed your macro. So at this stage of the game, as it gets messier as well, what's something else you guys should do? <clears throat> now remember, what is the secret rule that everyone says? When you first play StarCraft, what do you do? You select a command center, you build five SCVs, and you think that's good because you're building workers. But then we level up when someone says you should only ever have one worker queued on a command center at a time. And we realize in the early game, if we only have one SCV queued, we have 200 more minerals, we can build barracks earlier, we can build depots earlier. And our early game gets so much better. But there is a point in the mid game when the fighting starts where you actually want to queue more SCVs 
like you're a noob, okay? So in this scenario, if I'm multi-dropping and dancing around like Noisy Boy is, I will select my command centers and hold the SCV key down. I will just be like, I want four SCVs queued on each of these three command centers. You know, I'm going to queue 12 SCVs right now because I'm consciously saying I'm going to ignore my macro. And this is this idea which you guys can even, you can even build this into your builds where I always go for a double drop at six minutes. But right before, when my double drops out here, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to click it there, wait. And while I'm, I'm, as it's going across the map, I'm queuing up tons of SCVs. I'm starting my next upgrades. I'm building my next structure. Okay, now let's boost that medevac in, unload and go do some damage because we've queued up extra macro. We've queued up extra macro to keep things going. So the, the idea there is your APM is stretched across many tasks as the game evolves. So if you queue up one worker on each command center, say you've got three bases, that's assuming you're going to remember to come back and queue another SCV 12 seconds later. Let's be realistic with ourselves. It's not going to happen. You're probably going to come back 40 seconds later because not only is it the mid game, you got three bases to manage and all these barracks and things that you're landing a third base. You're also fighting as well. So even more so, you want to make sure you queue more SCVs per command center. I've never understood that. Do you literally want to queue them at 10 minutes? It depends if you're at your, your desired work account or not. If you've already got the workers you want, obviously you don't build more workers. But if you are busy in the game and you don't have the APM and you're trying to queue up one SCV per command center each side, but just queue two or even three or four if the game gets very busy. And this is why I always tell people with the Terran macro cycle, queue two SCVs every 25 seconds rather than one every 12 seconds. It's just a more realistic goal that you can hit. All right, so because we haven't built that, remember we could be at 60 SCVs right now. We could be like fully ready on five barracks, but we're just not building more medevacs. We're not evolving to the next step. We're still trading really well. If we just unload, heal this, send this double drop back in the main while this army attacks the third, that's a winning strategy. But at no point have we macroed up. What did we just do? Exactly what I said. We just queued two SCVs on the main and only one on the others. And we still haven't made an orbital. And we're finally starting a fifth barracks because it didn't go down. Well, when did we build this add-on and then come back to build this add-on? These SCVs didn't get queued back to mining. It's all chaos. It's all chaos. And all we need to do is go, hey, let's take a moment. But the more you play disorganized like this, the more you will become one of these salty Terrans who's in a Reddit thread, who's in a Twitch chat going, they just make Colossus and Storm and you just can't kill it, man. And it's like, dude, you played such a good game. The Protoss could not keep up with you at all on your micro. But your macro was toilet paper tier, man. And this is a very common story. What Noisy Boy is showing here, some really good play, but could be so much better, right? We're, we're tryharding a little bit too much on the micro. We need to take a breath and just hit our build fix our macro and take a breather between the micro here once again recall leave why every time when we see him recalling are we trying to get one more pylon just pick up and leave why are you trying to play like your clem and get one pylon before you leave just chill just you say recall just leave you're like no i want that pylon it's like dude come on man just take a breather all right so at this point we really need to go oh shit look at our money and what would i do here guys i would grab my scvs on this third Command center, command center. So I'd build two command centers on location. And then I would build three more barracks, right? Maybe maybe a factory as well. I'd maybe also be building tanks. Tanks are so good versus Colossus. But even just building bio, maybe a ghost academy if you want to go ghost, any of that's going to win you the game. But it, it's just at no point are we doing that. We're still not building SCVs. We're only at 50 workers. We never even got a fourth gas. So we're going to run out of gas at some point. We're not building depots. So this is just us getting tangled up in our own aggression. And now we're doing the, oh no. And now we're doing what every Terran does. They're like, cool. I've secured a lead by constantly doing multi-prong. I could keep doing that and winning the game by just dropping the main and attacking the third, which by the way, both angles are still wide open. Or we could group up our whole army in a ball and run it into Colossus and Psystorm. Now, thankfully there's only one high Templar. So I do think we win this game. I assume we do, but why not just be running bio in there, dropping the main again, right? It's like, why clump your army up? Especially if you're in such a shit army. And this here is a terrible army. 
Let's keep this in mind, everybody. I've seen too many Terrans tell me Storm's broken, Colossus is broken, and then I look at them running this around in a ball. This is a good army for dropping, for attacking in multiple areas in small fights. The more of these you put on one screen, it's like setting up a bloody target range for your opponent's splash damage and for your own miss micro. So that's actually really, really huge. So put it back in your pants. I like that we built two command centers, but we built a command center there and a command center in the main. And that means that was two separate series of actions, right? Rather than just building two command centers next to each other or even better on location. And now, rather than using the same method that's won us this game up to now, we're going to ball up and headbutt. And this is not what we want to do. We can not fight into Colossus Storm with just a giant bio ball. We're still not scanning ahead as well. We should be scanning ahead. Run, 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 run away. Do not fight into that. Run away. Okay. No, no, no. No. Okay. And this is where we've seen Clem run his army in a ball towards Splashdown. Guys, have you guys seen me cast Cure and Clem and stuff recently? How they do this every time they're fighting Storm. They keep their army balled up and they try to like fight on the edge of Storm. It literally gives me a headache. Every time I see a Terran do that, I'm like, you know you can just pre-spread your units. And they're like, no, nah, I'm going to dodge it. And I'm like, why? Why wouldn't you just pre-spread? And they're like, I want to dodge the storms to show how good I... And it, it makes sense because they're pro gamers and they have good reasons for doing it. But uh, yeah, that, that was a very unnecessary fight. If you're going to fight that sort of army, you don't focus fire. You have to A-move, okay? So the way you do it, you have to pre-spread and A-move. Two problems. You already used two stims at this point. You then do a third stim. And now we're going to do a fourth stim into splash damage so we did four stims we didn't spread and we fought into a choke point now if our army was spread here here and here and he moves out into the open to here then we could stim a move hands off the keyboard but you move commanded forward which meant you clumped up more you moved past the zealots and archons you ate bigger storms bigger colossus shots and you'd stimmed four times leading into this fight what would have been even better is if we just backed off, dropped half our army in the main, the other half just stays here, attacks back into the third, just keep working those two angles. Or if you do want to learn to be a more front-on player, there's a very different style, and that involves using the factory, which has been, honestly, this, this is a lonely factory. It's been sitting there with a tech lab on it for the last six minutes, and it has not been used. It just built its first siege tank, its first two siege tanks at the 12-minute mark. If you're building tanks all game, then you can do a push. You set up six siege tanks here, spread your bio around it, and you say, come and fight me, dickhead. And their Colossus are going to get wrecked, especially if you target fire them with the tanks. Your bio is pre-spread. That's Tanks can do it. Liberators can do it. If you guys want to play more front-on, not be as drop-focused, you can do that. That being said, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. I think your drop style is perfect, noisy boy. Just keep dropping, and more importantly, take a moment to macro behind it once in a while, and you'll absolutely destroy so if you just take a breath from your, mac your micro, when you micro, think of it as having a 20, 30 second timer on it, pick into your medevacs, fly away, macro for a good 30 seconds, really slow down, breathe, build my depots, build my gas, build my third base, land it, make an orbital, two barracks at once, cue the SCVs back in the middle, maintain those clean organized systems that gave you a pretty nice early game. Even though you were chatting and you messed up your build a little bit, there was a lot of nice clean little details, right? Where you're like queuing guys to do things and stuff. You keep that organization into the mid game, much easier for you to finish your opponent off there. And uh, like I said, if you do ever want to fight them, you got to kind of have them attacking into a big wide open area where you're pre-spread. You can have your army split in two squads and then just stim it from two sides. That kind of works, the old sandwich. It's just easier to just multi-drop them to death if you're on pure bio. But uh, overall, dude, great multi-prong. Some really good details to your play. Muhaxje! 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 So, we, we scouted, we saw an expansion, but our opponent is going to rush us. Okay, so first things first, in Zerg vs Terran especially, but you can apply this to all matchups, keep your rally point here, number one on the high ground of the ramp so you don't get your first units caught out on their own. It means if they run in, you've got time to pull back, okay? And gather your units and pull SCVs to help if you want. Number two, don't build the barracks like that. If you can build that two spaces to the left, 
Then you can have a depot there. It's easier to get in and out of your base. You don't have to go around. It just makes your wall off a bit cleaner. So that really helps you out. In my opinion, I really like to have the access on both sides of the barracks. Not the biggest thing, more of a detail. Overall, we're looking pretty good. I do think we don't need the second gas this early though, right? Because remember in the build, I think it's 35 supply, we take the second gas. So we could take that second gas much later. So notice you've gone that gas really super early. Let's delay that gas a little bit. I know when I first started <laughs> Terran Bronze to GM, I took the gas immediately just to do it all in one action. If you can delay that though, if you watch a bit later in the Bronze to GM, maybe like an hour or two into it, I think, or, maybe, or, or the silver session, I very quickly stopped doing the gas straight away with the barracks just to make the build because we're banking so much gas, it's unnecessary, right? So try to do the two barracks and uh, cue them back and let's try and delay the gas until a bit later in the build if possible. Um, if you've been playing it for a few weeks, I think you can make that adaptation. So check it out, right? Three week old SCT player, heck yeah. Thanks Blood Feast. I really appreciate it. If you guys are new to the channel, please click the follow button and stuff as well. Um, oh, we forgot our second depot as well. Yeah, yeah. So remember, we should always be building the second depot earlier as well, okay? So don't worry about that second and third barracks being a bit later and this second gas much later, okay? At this point, after you build your reactor, right? So what do you do? So, so at this point, just remember to sync up these basics. So it should be the moment the barracks finishes, we should be able to build an orbital. We can't, which tells us we were three seconds behind on SCV production. Beginner player, that's totally fine, not a big deal. But let's see, do we already have the SCV queued? Oh, we do. And you've already gone for your scout at this point. No, you did forget to SCV scout. So that is a bit of a pain. But anyway, let's see, we should be going orbital, reactor. Okay, yeah, a little slow on that, but we're getting there. We've got the barracks control group, command center control grouped, command center going down. We're finally remembering the SCV scout. So that's good that we have remembered to send that. Command center. Okay, command center is a little slow as well. That's all right, this is all fine. After the command center goes down, you always wanna drop that second depot pretty much straight away. So the second depot not being down is going to hurt us a lot because we're going to get supply block. We did drop a mule. Hot tip, don't drop the mule on the far away mineral patches. Now, I know they all look pretty similar, but this patch, this patch, this patch, and this patch are all a little bit further away. And if you look down in the bottom right of your screen, you can see the mineral value is a lot lower. These closer patches start with a lot more minerals. So you want to drop the mules on those because the mule will mine out that patch very quickly. And if you mine these little patches out, not only will it die one trip sooner, so you'll mine 25 less minerals before the mule expires, it's also going to mine out one of these patches so quickly, and then your SCVs just have less places to mine from. So you always want to drop the mules on these close patches, and if you can spread it across them, that's fantastic as well, okay? Now remember, second depot before the second and third barracks, make sure you build these things in the same order every game, and it'll become like clockwork, okay? So don't worry about raising your depot there. The drone walks in, the drone walks in. Focus on your build order. And you can see we forgot this depot for a very long time. That's super delayed. Also, just a hot tip. If you build it in the corner, SCV might get stuck in there. So you got to watch out. I bet he gets stuck. Watch him. SCVs love getting stuck. Ah, oh, no, he doesn't. Good on him. One of the rare times where an SCV didn't derp it. So like I said, um, Marines on the high ground. We don't really need to start building depots as well until 35 supply onwards is when Gary can start depot building. So if you would just keep building Marines, weren't supply blocked, had them rally to the high ground as well, this would be a really easy game for you. The reason this got hard is because you got supply blocked and your Marines were out front. If either of those change, you win. Because your opponent is A-moving slow Zerglings two at a time, which is one of the most objectively horrendous things you could possibly do rather than grouping them up first or waiting for league speed. But because we don't have, we could have easily had six Marines and we wouldn't have taken a single hit from any of those Zerglings. Everyone would have died. They wouldn't have hit any of our Marines. Maybe five damage on one Marine. But because we've now lost all of our units here, it's like, ah. So we're going to lift our command center. We've got more Marines coming out. Just need to change that rally point to here. And just hold that Marine key down. Notice that we're only building Marines on that barracks, not these. And that that's, that's a bit awkward. So we should be like, come on, build more Marines, build more Marines, build more Marines. And unfortunately for us, there are more Zerglings coming in. We haven't been keeping up our marine production. And so he's able to kill us in small numbers and it's just a slippery slope. So overall, it looks like the general order is kind of there, but delay the second gas. Let's get the second depot on time. Make sure you hit that. 
If you hit that and you keep your rally point here, you're a completely foolproof first builds like this. You will simply have too many Marines and you will be able to win those fights. And if they do come in with a big attack like this, they wait all at once. You can also aim with your STVs to help fight. You'll have so many Marines, it won't matter. Lem Lurog says, I heard that the close patches result in the middle not fully returning, the, the mule not fully returning the last load before dying. That's why they do the far patches. Did a pro gamer say this? Because that's wrong. That's so wrong. It does it does die with 25 minerals in the hand, but it's it's a it's really bad. It's the worst. If, if if please tell me if a pro like you thermal someone said this on their stream, so I can go tell them how wrong they are. This is not you. I know this isn't your opinion. You're new to the, you know uh, uh, Lumerog, but you're just repeating it. But I, I need to go laugh at that pro gamer or streamer whoever said that. It's completely wrong. So obviously, um, yes, they will. If you don't micro the mule and you do it on one of these close patches, it will die with 25 minerals in the hand just before it returns it, but that's fine because you still have mined 25 extra minerals before it gets to that point. So it's still the difference between 225 minerals versus 200 minerals and mining out your mineral patches, which massively reduces your mining later on versus actually keeping these mining patches available throughout the game so that your SCVs can mine effectively. Yeah. You don't know who says it? Let me know if you find them so I can roast them. Disinformation, fake news. Yeah, the super top pros will actually pull the mule away just before it runs out so it doesn't mine the last 25 minerals off the base. But it's such a minor thing, it barely matters. Scarlet says on some of the far paths, it will return. Yeah, but it won't be 225 minerals right it'll only be 200 so it might it might it might return the last minerals without removing it from the base but uh but it, it it'll still only be 200 rather than 225 i'm pretty sure maps like nightshade the natural has a farther fourth mineral this one one two three four this one uh with full minerals it was better to use it there but then it'll mine the base out quicker. So it's it's subjectively worse, Scarlet, because when the base mines out, you're losing so much mining time because your SCVs have nowhere to mine from. I've cast so many pro matches of Terrans where their main and natural mine out too early because they're doing this. It's a huge mistake in the long term. It hurts you so much down the track. Check the Nightshade natural after. We'll take a look. It's a really interesting information, but I, I, I really think it's like totally wrong lesson to, to read from the information. I think that's like the worst thing you can do. Yeah, the mule can mine on top of two other SCVs and it is indeed overpowered. If we quickly pulled all these SCVs to repair, we might have actually held this attack and won the game because we're ahead on economy. And we've got a bunker on the high ground. Yeah, if we held the low ground here, if we mass repaired these bunkers, we could have won. Try to always spread your bunkers out, guys, rather than building them next to each other, because then there's more surface area to repair. Oh, no one should ever be pulling their mules off. No, no, no. But we're talking about which patches to drop the mules on and why it should always be the close patches. Yeah. So you're saying, so Scarlet was saying that basically you should drop it on the far patch because on a certain map, certain maps, there's like a far patch you can drop it on. You still get the 225 minerals back in time. So it's the same amount, even though it mines it slightly slower. It's so marginal, it doesn't matter. You still get the same amount for the mule. And it won't mine the last 25 minerals and then have it disappear. The difference though, and, and anyone can go back to my old open cut muling video, is if you lose these mineral patches, you don't have anywhere to mine from with your SCVs, because SCVs need mineral patches to mine from. Mules should always be used on heavy patches so you can actually preserve your mineral patches. I've cast top pro gamers make this mistake where 10, 12 minutes into the game, uh, even sometimes even seven minutes in, um, they've already lost these patches. At 6.30, seven minutes, they're already mining out, just like the Terran is here. Sometimes five minutes, 30. And they're just, they're constantly running out of these mineral patches. You should, and, and the same thing happens on the natural where they're down to like five mineral patches at nine minutes or something. And I'm like, that should not be the case. That That's really, it's a huge misstep and it hurts their income so badly. If they can get a really fast fourth landed, it doesn't matter, but that's a very edge case. So this is something I'm very passionate about because it's such a basic thing that I figured out very early on in Legacy of the Void. 
and a lot of people did, but there's still high level players who are making that mistake and that, that just irritates me no end. Because I'm like, guys, you're just wrong. You're just, you've got to keep the greater patches. Because otherwise, how many times have we seen a Terran on three base with 66 workers, but only 52 of them are actually mining efficiently, right? How many times does that happen? There's literally 14 SCVs that are just stacking up on patches that are already got two or three SCVs on it. It's really, yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. Your main far patches are meant to mine out at 8 minutes 30 to 9 minutes just by natural mining. And your natural, assuming you fast expand it, about 11, 30, 12 minutes. Those four mineral patches should run out. But you don't want that to speed out. There's only three close patches on Nightshade. Okay, we're going to take a look at this. Anyway, I think we've told Mahachi enough to improve. This is really interesting. There's only three close patches, so one of the far patches has 1,500. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, as long as it's a heavy mineral patch, that makes sense. Okay, Scarlet, Scarlet, okay, that's fine. That makes perfect sense then. So that's an edge case where as long as it's a 1500 mineral patch, that makes perfect sense. 